now listen to this for a story. Uh, a man born in Blackpool whose mum was the victim of the Yorkshire Ripper is asking for help in tracing his birth father, who he thinks may still uh, either be in the resort himself or at least have links. Jeff Beatty only learnt his mum had been murdered by Peter Sutcliffe a few years ago. Uh, not murdered a few years ago, but he learnt it just a few years ago when he decided to search for his birth parents. He'd been adopted at Jeff, but decided to try and track them down. And Jeff joins us on the telephone uh, right now. And you certainly uncovered a, a remarkable story, Jeff, didn't you? Morning, Alison. Yes, yeah, it was quite a, quite a surprise. And let's go back to the beginning. You were adopted as a as a boy. Yes, uh, back in 1969. I was born in, in October, uh, and my mum's circumstances at the time she couldn't she couldn't look after me, so she had to put me into adoption pretty much straight away. That was uh, in November and January. My adoption went through. And your your mum was in at Blackpool at the time. Yeah, she was originally from Scotland, but she'd left left Scotland and she moved down to Blackpool to work there for for a while. Um, she worked as a chambermaid uh, and worked as a nanny in a few places as well. And she was known. Um, she was she was called Irene Richardson, but also called Eileen as well. Yeah, well, um, before she was married, her original name was Osborne, so it was Irene Osborne. Okay, because the names changed quite a lot in this. Because you weren't born as as Jeff Beatty, were you? No, I was. I was born as Alan Osborne. Okay, so your, your birth mum then put you up for adoption. She continued in Blackpool for a time. And then give me her movements and what you learnt about her, because, you know, it, it must have come as a, a, a real shock. Yeah, what seemed to happen um, not long after mum, mum had me, she had a, a few difficult relationships and, and things didn't turn out too bad. Uh, didn't, didn't turn out too good for it. But as, as things moved on, she went on um, and, and she got married to a, to a chap called George. That was George Richardson. Uh, while she was married, she had two little girls. Um, their names... Uh, my, my, my sister doesn't really want to discuss it at the moment. That's so, OK. But she, the, they, they went on. They're, they're quite OK now. Um, but my mum's relationship broke down and she had to move away. So she moved over to Leeds um, and, and things didn't really pan out for her again in Leeds over there. So she had a, she had a tough life and... How she she was the third victim. She became the third victim of Sutcliffe, didn't she? Yes, that's right. Yeah, she was the third one. Because there was quite some debate, wasn't there, as to whether um, when she was murdered, as to whether she had been murdered by the Yorkshire Ripper. Yeah, originally, well, I, I found out when um, I started to do my my, my tracing. The, the social worker gave me a big pile of papers, um, and in the she gave me information that my mum had been murdered and. In 1977, but at the time, nobody made any association with the Yorkshire Ripper. I mean, it must have been a, a shock as it was, um, Jeff, to find that your, your birth mum had been, you know, a, a victim of murder anyway, but then to go on and establish that she had been murdered by one of the most infamous killers in British history. Yeah, it, it was... Uh, at first, I was, I was completely devastated to find, first of all, that I'm not going to be able to, to make contact with my mum, um, but that she'd been murdered and that was, you know, a, like a, a double blow as well, which I kind of, you know, it took me some time to, to come to terms with, uh, but eventually I thought, you know, I need to, to, to put this to rest now, I need to find out what I can and the situation and the circumstances, uh, which is when... I knew a name, and what happened was that I went to Google one day, and I, I thought, I'll, I'll put in a name and just see. I thought, well, she's been murdered. There, there must be some information out there uh, that, that's going to be traceable. Mm. So I searched on Google, and Mum's picture came up in the search results, and, and that's when I, I found out everything else. Are you able to put into words the feelings that went through you when you when you, when you read what you saw? Um I, I can't describe it to be honest. I, I was in, I was in work and I, I was just sitting on my own having a coffee and I thought I'll just just look at this and, and to see my mum's picture there and, and to be associated with, with everything uh, everything else just like that it was just Shocking. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, I thought that's that's my mum. That's that's my mum. So was that the first time also that you saw photographs of your mum in the press coverage devoted to her murder? Yes. Previous to that, I'd seen the, 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 the newspaper clipping that's, that's all, you know, that's always used when they run the story. They'd always use that one single picture, and that was the same picture that I'd been given from the social worker, and it was also the same picture that I'd found, and the only picture at that time that I'd, uh, that I'd seen of my mum. Were you aware that you had any other, you know, birth relatives? At, th at the 
once I'd found the, the connection um, with, with uh, Mum's death, then I was able to, to, to find out much more. Um, I, I got in touch with uh, a, a lad called Richard McCann, whose who's mum was the first victim. We, we became good friends, and he was terrific support for me, and he helped me make contact um, with, with my sisters. Yeah. So from, from there, I got in touch with them, um, and they'd had pictures because, you know, they, they'd been brought up different circumstances to me, and they'd managed to get all the pictures and more information as yeah. well. Jeff, the point of this interview as well is is to try and find any links um, that may uncover a search for your for your birth dad. Are you okay to stay on the phone, Jeff? Because we have to go for the headlines yeah, uh, and other yeah, things in the programme. Because you know it's, it, it is a, a really interesting story and one that I'm sure people want to hear more about. So you're all right to stay there? Yes, yeah, fine. I listen, no problem. All right. So that's Jeff Beatty who is searching for any links to his birth dad in Blackpool. Stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll continue our conversation with Jeff Beatty, who is trying to find his birth dad. He found out when he began searching for his birth mum, having been adopted as a baby boy, that she had been uh, a victim of the Yorkshire Ripper. Now, uh, a severe shock, I'm sure, because you came across press articles, didn't you, Jeff, as we were saying just before headlines, and, and you were faced with pictures of, of your mum. Uh, and then you enlisted the help uh, of, of people to, to try and find out a little bit more information. And you mentioned... Uh, it's, it's Richard McCann, who was the son of the first victim of the Ripper. Yes, that's right, yeah. And what, what's he been able to help you with? Well, at the time, um, it was quite a strange coincidence, Richard and his sister Sonia was doing a programme at the BBC. Um, it was called One Life, where they was looking into what had happened to other victims and he was trying to make contact with other victims and just to offer their help and support. So in the middle of them making that programme, I sent an email to Richard explaining... Um, that I'd just found out about my mum and what had happened, and could he help me in any way to try and get in touch with, you know, members of the family, um, or, you know, because I'd, I'd heard that there was, you know, I had sisters and uh, mum's sisters and mum's brothers, uh, and I asked him if he could help with this, and yeah. he said, well, you know, it just so happens we're in the middle of doing this programme, do you want to come on and make an appeal? Um, and at the time I was like, no, I'm not interested in going on telly or, you know, going public, I'm just getting my head round things at the moment trying so, to absorb all the information you'd found out yeah plus uh, it was it, it was a thing to you know suddenly be you know to go from a, a relatively normal life to to be on tv saying my mum was a victim it was not something i was like it really interesting i thought if i got sisters out there and other family it'd be great to make contact but i didn't really want to stand up and you know say, say that Enchanted was my moment it, and have yeah. that association with it because i didn't know how to deal with it all at the time no what effect what impact has it had on your life since since learning that because this was about 2003 2005 wasn't it yeah well it was 2004 uh, I, we, <laughs> we just had my uh my, my little boy he was he was born a few months earlier so we, we went to the office and, and they told us and i think the, the effect at the time was 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 quite dramatic and it but it was I've, I've kind of come to terms with everything now and I've moved on from the initial reaction of it. Um, the, the, the reaction, I think the, what stays with me now, the occasional thought is, you know, my, my children are never going to get to meet um, this lady that was the that was the grandma because, she, you know, she's no longer here. And also the thing with me tracing my adoption, you know, trying to find my parents. Yeah. Obviously I'm not going to uh, get to meet my mum now, but my, my thoughts have recently changed to you know trying to find my dad there's a, a chance that he still could be around uh, do you think he may still be in blackpool because it, it, did he stay in blackpool when he separated from from your mum well if the information i've got is they was only together for uh, for a short while and he may not even know uh, that i exist or that you know he, he may not even know about me so it's a real tough search then isn't it jeff it is, yeah. He's mentioned, I mean, my mum's name's in a few different books, but one of the books that was, um, that, that's was that got a, a lot of information about mum and, and her, her life and what she'd been up to mentions um, that my mum had an address book, and in that book was the name Dennis. Uh, there's no surname or anything, it's just the name Dennis, um, who could possibly be my father. So, But there's no more information with that. The other name that I've got is a chap called Jim Brown, who was a self-employed mechanic in Blackpool at the time. Now, that that information, there's nothing on my birth certificate. That information was in a letter that I was passed from the social worker about different notes about my mum and about the adoption, and they'd mentioned that the father could be this Jim Brown, who was a self-employed mechanic in Blackpool at the time. I know you're based in St Helens uh, now, Jeff. I mean, have you yeah. spent much time in Blackpool physically trying to find out information? 
Um, I've been around and I've, I've just been to some of the addresses that Mum used to uh, used to live at and a couple of the hotels. I've not had anybody to really contact. The only person I have had contact with is, and it was through Richard, um, there was a lady that saw the programme a while ago and her mum used to live in a flat at 104 Central Drive. I'm not sure if it's still a flat at the moment, but she lived in the front flat and my mum lived in the back flat uh, and they became quite good friends. And she sent me an email with all different interesting things about my mum's life and the things they was up to. And, and that was really comforting to, you know, to, to have that kind of information from my mum. Because all I've had so far is the bits and pieces on the internet and, and in the books. Yeah. So anyone who may have information, because, you, you know, you, your birth dad would have surely known that, that his former partner had become a murder victim of the Ripper. He wouldn't have been able to escape that, would he? Well, I'm not sure, because they would have been together... 68, um, 68, 69, and it wasn't until I was seven until mum actually died. So if they, depending on the type of relationship, you know, if they'd just been together, it, we don't know if it was a one-night stand or if they'd been together a little bit longer because of the, the names associated, but if, if they kind of split up before I was born, straight away, as soon as I was born, I then got put up for adoption, so my mum would have only been with me for a few weeks, and then, you know, seven years later, when mum died, he may not have associated, you know, my mum with a person. What would it mean uh, to you, Jeff, if you found him? Wow, uh, <laughs> I, I can't, can't put that into words. To to to, to be able to just meet him, it would. Uh, I don't know. I can't describe it. To be honest, no, it, it'd just sure. be incredible. Can I ask what your adoptive parents, your your, your mum and dad, who took you on, think about your search? Uh, my, my 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 dad who. who well, my mum and my dad, my dad's no longer with us. He passed away a few years ago, but my mum's my fine with it. Um, I spoke to her a few times about it, and she was a little bit surprised when I'd found out the association and, and what had happened uh, because she didn't realise at, at the time because when she adopted me, my name was Osborne, and then later on my mum got married and she died under the name of Richardson. So I don't think there was a connection really made um, at the time to, to who she was um, but they, they they were fantastic parents, they gave me everything I needed brought me up really well um, so everything, you know, up until finding out about my mum was, was fantastic yeah. my, my parents were great So you've had a really happy upbringing, a happy life but with from a catastrophic background Oh yeah, I, I can't, you know uh, not bring in as normal as, as everybody else, it, w it was great it was just such a devastating blow to find out you know quite late on in life well not late on but you know at the age of 35 to, to find out the, the, the truth behind yeah. uh, who my mum was so go on just finally uh jeff give us the bullet points of people you know for people in in lancashire who may just be able to help in suggesting you know a location for your dad and what happened well, for anybody that was in, in and around Blackpool, um, 68, 69, um, that may have known Irene Osborne, a uh, Scottish lady, she was slim build, quite small, uh, long, straight, dark hair, um, any friends, any family, anybody that may have worked with her, um, old boyfriends, new boyfriend, anybody, any kind of contact. And what was she working as? Uh, mostly she was a chambermaid, uh, but she went on to, to work for uh, work as a nanny later on. Uh, mm. But mostly in and around Blackpool, she was working as a chambermaid. In the hotels? Yeah. OK, and um, we will put... Um, any information we get, we'll ask people, uh, Jeff, to phone our help desk, 0845 305 9000, and anything we do get, I'll then pass on to you personally. All right, Jeff? That's fantastic. Also, I mean, I'd love to be able to meet my dad, uh, and that that would be... You know, like that would be the ultimate goal. But I'm also interested in finding out more about my mum's life as well, the, the things that she did as a normal person before, you know, all, all the, the things that happened in, uh, at the end. And that's since getting the email off that lady uh, that whose mum shared the flat with mum, to, to find information like that is, is really comforting. And it's, it's interesting as well because it helps me build a better picture of the life that mum had, you yeah. know, previously. And where about you from? Yeah, and it's also something that I want to... I want to, say, I want to do this as well for my children because I don't want them to... I mean, the, the 10, 7 and 5 now, so we're, they're not going to do it yet, but one day they'll come and they'll go to Google and they'll find what I did. I want to be able to put together... Um, a bigger picture. Yeah, so to, to prepare them for that and say to them, you know, this, this, this was the, the lady that was my mum, your gran, um, and, you know, this is 
what happened, basically, because okay. they'll find out, and I'd sooner it come from me, and I'm having a fuller picture as well. Jeff, hopefully our conversation just now will help you get some uh, pieces of the picture together. Thanks for your time this morning. So is anyone um, that knew Irene Osborne, who worked in the hotel industry in the late 60s in Blackpool, can you help Jeff Beatty try and find any information about his birth mum, who we know was the third victim of the Yorkshire Ripper, or his dad? 0845 305 9000. Thanks to Jeff. It's 14 minutes to 11. Travel you can trust. From BBC Radio Lancashire.